Hi everyone, Jessica here from Baby Ink Stamp and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm sharing with you a February craft haul. So I picked up a couple of items from the Craft Stash website, mainly because they had 10% off and I did have my eye on this smaller Tim Holtz uh, paper trimmer and I thought well, I might as well get it while they do have that 10% off deal. So this is the mini guillotine. So you've seen that I got the Crafters Companion, the large one, the sort of 12 by 13 inch, I think it is. Uh, this is the smaller one. This is the 8.5 inch. So the markings on this only go up to six inch, but the at the widest point of the guillotine, it's actually eight and a half inch. If I'm gonna be cutting or measuring anything that's over that six inch, I'll probably use my Crafters Companion large guillotine. Um, but I got this one just to cut those sort of in-between things. So that big guillotine is so big, trying to get it on my desk. Um, and then you've seen that I've got that really tiny um, sort of Fiskars guillotine as well, which is great for the smaller projects. But I find that I just needed that in-between size. And I think I'll probably end up using this more so now than I will that smaller uh, Fiskars guillotine. So of course you would expect the quality of this to be really great. And of course it is. Um, it did take me off guard a little bit because how far I'm pulling up the handle is literally how far up it goes. With that Crafters Companion one, it goes much, much higher. Uh, so I kept trying to pull it up, but it wasn't going up any further. But it was really easy to um, cut it using the grid lines and seeing uh, exactly where I wanted to measure and cut to. It does have a few extra details on the body itself, showing you sort of quite common um, card sizes. So that's really great as well. So overall, I do, I really love the size uh, of this guillotine. So the next thing I purchased was the Distress Texture Paste. So I mentioned this in my last video when I showed you using that um, iZinc 3D Texture Paste. I used up all of that product because I'd had it for quite a while. Uh, and I did say in that video that I had ordered this one. This is a matte texture paste. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's not white in colour. It's just a uh, plain texture paste. And I am going to have a go near the end of the video just mixing this with one of the Distress Ink colours and seeing how well it takes on that colour. Because the one thing I did notice with that Eyes Ink uh, Jasmine colour, so it was a white coloured texture paste, it, it kind of muted it down. It's It didn't take on that full strength colour. So we're going to have a look and see how this product turns out. So the next two products that I purchased, I got two more of the Nouveau Shimmer Powder range. So this one here I've got is the Golden Sparkler. So this is... Obviously within that gold family, it's got a little bit of brown in it and again some other colours. I am going to demonstrate these so we can see exactly um, how they turn out because obviously you can see I'm taking these out of the packaging. I haven't used these yet. So I'm really excited to see what that one looks like. Um, and the second one I got, this is the Catherine Wheel. So I was expecting this to, of course, be kind of red. I was expecting it to be a little bit pinky, a little bit yellow. But I did find, much like the Solar Flare, this is more of a single kind of colour. Uh, so it did come out sort of mainly red. But again, we're going to um, use a stamp and then we're going to create just two panels using these Nuvo shimmer powders. So let's have a go at using our shimmer powders. So I'm going to get some watercolour cardstock and I've got then this Tonic Botanical Background Stamp. So it's just slightly smaller than this uh, A2 piece of cardstock. So this is the Tonic Studios watercolour card. So I'm going to take a panel out. I'm going to use the smoother side. And I'm going to pop this into my stamping platform. Because it is going to be stamped onto watercolour cardstock, it does take just a couple of extra stamps to get that full image coverage. Once I have stamped this botanical background stamp, I'm going to heat emboss it with some clear embossing powder. So I'm going to use a black ink. I'm going to use the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And then this is going to create those little pockets and those little wells where we can have that colour kind of separate out. And it means we can actually see the colours that are kind of mixed together within these shimmer powders. If this is the first time that you're seeing the Nuvo Shimmer Powder, these are basically little bottles and it's jam-packed in there with little kind of pigments of colour. Um, because of the name tells you Shimmer Powder, it has got tons of shimmer in here. You can't always necessarily see it on screen, unfortunately, but when you see these in real life, they are so sparkly and they just give the most incredible um, effect to them once they've dried. 
but it's just filled some of them are filled up with lots of different colors that are mixed together uh, and then things like the solar flare and again more like this Catherine wheel this red color it is kind of more of one color but the really great thing about heat embossing like I said creating those little wells and those little pockets means that you can see all of those colors so they will mix together really beautifully to create a single color if you want to use it that way but you can get it where you can keep those colors sort of somewhat separate so you can see that I'm just stamping this out again, like I said, because it's on watercolour cardstock, it is uh, taking just a couple of goes to get that full coverage. And I am here, I've seen in a couple of other videos, I've seen a couple of comments as well. This is just a really cheap whiteboard uh, eraser. So I do have a whiteboard in my home, so it's just one that I use for that. Uh, but it just helps give an even impression uh, across the whole of that stamp. So you get a really nice even uh, stamp with it. While that ink's still wet, I'm then pouring on some clear embossing powder and then I can heat set that with my heat gun. And I end up creating two panels exactly the same so that I can use both of the new shimmer powders that I've purchased. So what I'm going to do is, because I end up with water kind of all over my desk, I am just going to put down one of my microfiber cloths and hopefully this is just going to kind of contain it and mean that I have a little bit less tidying up to do. After I'd heat set this, I left it to one side just for a couple of minutes just to let it cool back down again. And then we can sprinkle on our shimmer powder. So I'm not squeezing the bottle because a little goes a long way. And I'm just gently tapping the end of it just to get some of that powder out. And I'm kind of spreading that over my background. I'm going to take my pokey tool. This is just going to hold down my cardstock and stop it from warping too much. And then I'm going to spritz my water straight onto the background. And this is why you need to use watercolour uh, watercolor paper. So you can see straight away that that shimmer powder has mixed with that water and you can begin to see all of the colours that are involved making up this golden sparkler colour. And you can see in there that by having the little pockets of embossing powder, it's keeping some of that liquid and some of those colours a little bit more separate and it means then you get a much more interesting background. Some of that darker colour might be little sections of the uh, Memento ink that I've used and perhaps where that hasn't had any embossing powder. So you do want to be careful with that, but I, I do really love this mixture of the darker kinds of colours. And to me, this looks more like, a, like an autumn kind of background. Uh, it's got those kind of autumn colours in here. So what I am going to do is just use my heat gun just a little bit to dry this back. Um, you can leave it to dry naturally or of course then you could just do a general blast with your heat gun being careful not to kind of concentrate it too much in one area so you don't end up burning your embossing powder but I think this is so beautiful this is now sort of one of my favorites along with that meteorite shower I think I really love these shimmer powders that have got lots of different colors in it because I think it gives you much more variety and a really more beautiful kind of background I also really love this stamp. So this is the first time that I've used this uh, botanical background stamp. And I think this would be perfect. This would be perfect for a autumn themed card, but you could do it in really bright colours and that could be a summertime card. So I think this background works perfectly for lots of different seasons. So I've blasted it a little bit with my heat gun, but I'm now just going to set it to one side just to dry a little bit more naturally. And then we can start having a look at this Catherine wheel. So again, the exact same process, I'm just tapping on the bottom of the bottle just to have a small sprinkling of that shimmer powder. And again, then we can take our water and we can spritz that onto this background. Like I said earlier in the video, I was expecting this to be kind of a blend of reds, maybe a bit of pink, a bit of yellow in here, but I find that it was more of just kind of this red shade, which is still really beautiful, but I find that there wasn't too many colors that was sort of making up this Catherine wheel like I expected to. And this is much the same as the solar flare, which is just that yellow shade. With the Catherine wheel, I did go in and add a second layer. So I just repeated that process um, and it just helped darken um, a few of those areas up because I wanted to see how this would layer up um, and if you could get some really interesting effects uh, that way. 
With then the golden sparkler, I only added a small section at the bottom where I found didn't have too much colour. Uh, but looking at this now, again, you can see those beautiful colours in there. And, and like I said, I think this is now sort of one of my favourites um, out of the five that I've got. So I really loved being able to have a side-by-side -side comparison of these two different colours and really being able to kind of see what these products actually look like. So what I decided to do off camera was use all five of the shimmer powders that I have and I decided to create swatches. So by having these now, I can decide the kind of look that I want to go for on a project and I can decide which one of these that I want to use. So I've taken, like I said, the exact same stamp. So this here is the Solar Flare. And again, like I said, with that uh, Catherine wheel, it seems to be that kind of solid uh, one color type of uh, shimmer powder. But hopefully I'm gonna try and tilt it in the light and hopefully you'll be able to see that really beautiful shimmer in there. So the next swatch, swatch that I've made, this is the Atlantis Burst. And again, you can see those different kinds of colours. You've got that kind of turquoise, you've got a little bit of blue in that top left-hand corner, and you've got a little bit of yellow in there as well. And by creating these swatches, every time you get a new colour that you add to the collection, you can create one of these. And like I said, it just means you can see exactly what you've got and what kind of effect it's going to create. So this is the meteorite shower. This is my favourite, so it would go this one then the golden sparkler because I love those blues and pinks and purples uh, that make up this colour. I think it's such a beautiful colour. When you add them, that shimmer in there, it's just, I just think it's amazing. So then we have that Catherine wheel. So like I said, it's, it seems to be that one kind of colour, but it does build up really nicely. Like I said, that one, I did add a second layer to it. And then lastly, we have then our golden sprinkler, a uh, sparkler, sorry. And I just, I think this is beautiful. You've got those kind of really paley blue, gray colors in there. You've got those really kind of deep um, uh, sort of browns, those sort of rich browns. You've got a little bit of green in there. I just think it's really beautiful. And again, hopefully then in um, popping it in the light, you could see kind of that shimmer uh, that you get. It's, it's such a full on effect that it doesn't always pick up on camera, but honestly in, in real life, I think it's so beautiful. I then trim these down just to make them a little bit more presentable with my new guillotine. And again, the guillotine just works so well. This is the watercolour cardstock and it just cuts flawlessly, again, as you would expect it to. And now I've got five swatches for these Nouveau Shimmer Powders. And then I just hand wrote on the back of these exactly which colours they were. So if I come to want to do a project and I want to see uh, which colour I want to use for that project or card, background, whatever it is, I can pick out one of these and I know exactly which colour it is. So it's also a really great idea if you've got a collection of more than one product just with different colours, it's always a great idea to swatch these out so you can see exactly what they're going to be like. So I really want to quickly have a go at using this Tim Holtz uh, texture paste. So I'm just going to do a really quick um, blend here with then the stencil because uh, I did do this in my previous video but I just wanted to see exactly how this would work. So here I'm using some Distress Ink in the Broken China colour and I can really tell the difference already at how much it's taken on this colour. So what I did end up doing was smushing the ink three times onto that glass mat and mixing it in and each time you could tell that it was getting darker. So I don't know how many times you would have to do this to really get that if you wanted that really intense dark colour but I did notice the difference between using this product and that um, eye zinc 3D texture paste that I used in the white, it really took on that color. So if you wanted to use a texture paste, maybe you was using Broken China somewhere else on your project, or that was kind of the theme you wanted to go with. This is a really great idea to, again, just stretch that product, do something a little different. Um, and I, I think it worked really well. So you're definitely gonna have to have a go at this, um, again, for a future project or on a future card. So once I pop that all through the stencils, you can see that I just scraped off all of the excess. And then when we pull this up, um, it, it just gives such a beautiful effect, especially with them that white. Uh, the texture paste was a different texture to the one that I had. Um, the other one was kind of more like 
butter it was a lot looser this is just a little bit more kind of um stiff i guess i would say i don't know if, if you need to sort of mix it around a little bit more but i thought it was just a much better product uh, to use so i'm really happy with this and i like i said i'm definitely gonna have a go at just creating um some more backgrounds but actually using it uh, to create cards and projects so that is a look at my recent craft haul. So hopefully, maybe I've shown you a couple of new products here that you might want to have a look at yourself. If you want me to go over any of these products in a little bit more detail, just drop me a comment down below and we can certainly have a go at creating uh, that video for you. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below, as I said. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. You don't miss out on any future videos that I'll upload and hit that notification bell so you know when I have uploaded. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.